Today we're talking about the BMW K1600 GT and GTL and nine things you need to know. Hello everyone, I am Mike and welcome to New Bike Mike where I like to share information about new bikes that I find interesting. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this in the future, then please remember to hit the subscribe. After all, it's free. I'm going to do a comparison video of some of the big touring bikes from different brands in the near future. I'm doing a video on the individual contenders first. I already did a video on the 2022 Goldwing which will definitely be in the comparison video and recently I covered the new Indian Pursuit which is one of the new top of the line options from Indian Motorcycles which is owned by Polaris. Last week I covered the Harley Davidson Road Glide Limited. The fourth bike will be a BMW. I just have not decided if it should be the K1600 or the R18 Transcontinental yet. We're going to look at both bikes and then decide which one should be the one to represent BMW in the comparison. The K1600 is not fitted with the Tour Pack while the GTL is. We're going to look at both models today. There's also a Grand America version, which looks like the GTL with more American styling. And there's also a B model, which looks like the GT, but again, with the more American styling. Let's get into it. One, what's new? To start with, we get a revised six cylinder engine to meet the Euro 5 regulations. There's also next generation electronic suspension, a new full LED adaptive headlight as standard, there is a new full color 10 and a quarter inch TFT display and a new audio system. We'll talk about each of those in more depth as we go through the specs. Two, engine. At the heart of the new K1600 series of bikes is the narrowest six cylinder inline engine in motorcycle series production according to BMW. With the width of less than 22 inches and a weight of 226 pounds, we get 1,649 cc's with four valves per cylinder. The changes to the engine for 2022 are related to the use of BMS engine control, knock sensors, and more sensors in the exhaust system to make sure the engine meets those pesky Euro 5 regulations. So while improving emissions, BMW managed to maintain a maximum 160 horsepower, but achieved this peak power 1000 RPM sooner than before. Torque got a bump from 129 foot-pounds to 133. Compression is 12.2 to 1 on this liquid-cooled engine as well. 3. Drivetrain All this power and torque is delivered through a 6-speed manual gearbox and is applied to the rear wheel via shaft drive. As you can see here, the shaft drive is located on the left side of the bike and the brake is on the same side, leaving a clean look on the right side of the wheel. I have to say, I think this makes it much easier to check or add air to the rear tire. 4. Chassis and Suspension The frame is a bridge type made of cast aluminum and the engine is a load bearing part of the frame. We also have a cast aluminum single sided swing arm which is part of how that clean look is achieved on the right side of the rear wheel. Front suspension is BMW Motorrad's Duo Lever with central spring strut, which is far from the telescopic forks seen on many bikes. In the rear, we get BMW Motorrad's Paralever with central spring strut. Suspension travel in the front is 4.5 inches and the rear has 5.3. The K1600 is equipped with BM Motorrad's Dynamic Electronic Suspension Adjustment. Damping is automatically adapted to the riding conditions and riding style. The system includes automatic load level compensation as well. The signals from the new 6-axis sensor box and the two sensors in the front and rear collect data and enable sensitive adjustment of the K1600. This adjustment is made by electrically operated control valves within milliseconds. 5. Brakes In the front we get dual 4-piston fixed calipers on 320mm disc. In the rear we get a double piston caliper on a 320mm disc. The K1600 is fitted with BM Motorrad's Integral ABS Pro which is lean sensitive meaning it has cornering ABS. 6. Wheels We find 17 inch wheels on the front and back of the K1600. For rubber in the front we get a 120-70R17 and the rear gets a nice bump up to a 190-55R17. It looks to me like we get Bridgestone Battle Axe Sport Touring Tread from the factory. 7. Tech We have a lot of tech here so let's jump into it with the three rider modes which are Rain, Road, and Dynamic. Which mode you are in can affect the damping characteristics of the dynamic electronic suspension we discussed earlier. MSR is new and it's engine drag torque control. With MSR, excessive rear wheel slip can be avoided. This rear wheel slip can occur when downshifting in some conditions. 
In these cases, the engine drag torque control opens the throttle valves to level the drag torque and stabilize the motorcycle. Engine drag torque control compares the rotational speeds of the front and rear wheels in the same way as the standard dynamic traction control does. Thus, it determines the slip or traction capacity at the rear wheel. The level of control depends on the riding mode. In rain and road riding modes, the engine drag torque control ensures maximum riding stability. In dynamic riding mode, on the other hand, the control permits slightly more rear wheel slip. Data from the six axis sensor box is used to manage all of this. A new full LED headlight eliminates the road with a bright clear light and consists of an LED module with a total of nine LEDs for the low beam headlight and eight more LEDs for the high beam. The headlight is adaptive and turns into the curves according to the lean angle. We get 35 degrees of turning function and two degrees up and down during acceleration and braking. We get new light functions called welcome, goodbye, and follow me home. They allow the light to be on when the ignition is off or to turn the lights off if you have left the ignition on for a while without starting the bike. We have a new 10 quarter inch TFT color display with integrated map navigation and connectivity. The display features a full HD resolution. In the full screen view, the full capability of the display becomes visible. The alternative split screen view allows several function areas to be shown simultaneously and clearly controlled using the multi-controller. The speedometer and tachometer as well as the basic functions and the selection menu are displayed in the main pure ride screen. The My Vehicle, Navigation, Radio, Media, Telephone and Settings menus can be selected via displayed tiles. Features such as cruise control, riding modes and audio radio are seamlessly integrated into the display making them easy to use. The favorite button was developed with the aim of simple intuitive operation based on the rider's needs. The unit of four buttons is located on the left side of the fairing panel below the handlebars and enables access to 18 functions such as audio or heated grips using two stage buttons. A smartphone can safely be accommodated in a splash proof electrically ventilated storage compartment above the TFT display and its battery can be charged via USB cable while in the compartment. The smartphone is protected from unwanted removal by the adjustable windscreen that automatically moves to the lower position after the ignition is switched off. To open the compartment, switch on the ignition and press the release button. The windscreen immediately raises and the lid of the charging storage compartment opens in a cushioned manner as soon as the windscreen reaches the topmost position. Tire pressure monitoring, 12 volt power socket, heated grips and seat are also standard equipment on all K1600 models. The Audio System 2.0 is standard on the new K1600 GTL, providing an intensive sound experience. The Audio System is available as an option on the K1600 GT. A striking feature of the new Audio System 2.0 is that the antennas for the radio reception are now integrated into the bodywork. 8. Dimensions the seat is 29.5 inches and the ready to ride weight is only 789 pounds on the GTL. The GT has a higher 31.9 inch seat height and weighs 756 pounds. The K1600 has approximately 7 gallons of usable fuel tank and at 38 miles per gallon you should get over 250 miles between stops. 9. Prices and Colors before we talk dollars, I want to mention that you get up to a 3 year or 36,000 mile warranty on all new BMW motorcycles. The GT in black is $23,895, the sport style package with white and blue paint adds $595, and the option 719 with mineral white metallic paint and gold colored calipers adds $1,900. Adding the premium package adds another $3,000, but you get engine protection bars, LED adaptive fog lights, the audio system on the GT, and a security system and more. The GTL starts out at $27,690 in black, and the style exclusive trim gets you gravity blue metallic paintwork for $795 more. The option 719 mineral white metallic adds $1,900 to the price. Because the GTL already has some of the features from the GT premium package as a standard, the premium package on the GTL then adds $1,850 to the price. Quick note, the K1600B starts at $23,340 and the Grand America starts at $28,540. Leave me a comment below and let me know which of these styles bikes you would want. The GT or the B with the more American styling? Or do you want the rear trunk and want the GTL or the Grand America? 
I have to say, I would really like to get my hands on a K1600B for an extended period. I know BMW has partnered up with some YouTubers lately to get them on R18 press bikes for long-term reviews. If they need someone to ride a K1600B around all summer and compare it to a Harley-Davidson Street Glide, I could be your guy. Stay tuned for an upcoming video where we're going to take a look at the R18 Transcontinental. Don't forget to like the video, it really helps the channel grow, and subscribe if you want to see more videos from New Bike Mike. Thanks guys, see you in the next one.